I don't normally do these sort of videos, but I've just discovered a complete game changer for my live sound. And it seems like people don't know this, or maybe they just don't talk about it. Uh, but I think it's something that not just banjo players, but players of all acoustic instruments ought to be aware of. If you want to skip all the background, I've included a summary in the video description and chapter listings so you can skip ahead to the bit that you're interested in. So you've probably heard of Tone Dexter, the approximately sort of £590 or so DI preamp box that can make your piezo pickup sound like an, uh, the acoustic sound of your instrument. Uh, and if you're like me, that's too much money to spend on something that you're not going to use in every gig. Uh, ideally, you'd always get to play acoustically or into a mic, but sometimes that just isn't an option, and that's where pickups come into the equation. Uh, I've obsessed over my pickup sound. Uh, I don't think I've done badly in the past, uh, but I've never been fully satisfied, especially compared to what you can get with the Tone Dexter. Uh, however, what you might not know is that the technology behind the Tone Dexter is freely available and can be replicated on a budget of considerably less than £50. And I'm going to show you how. So a quick preface, uh, I don't think that the Tone Dexter is a ripoff. Uh, a good preamp and DI box costs money, it's clearly well built. I expect there's some proprietary element to their implementation and they invest in development, customer support, you know, all of that good stuff. Uh, if you have that cash and you want that convenience and reliability, there are worse ways you can spend it. So with that out of the way, uh, how does the Tone Dexter work? Well, basically, it uses a technology called impulse response modeling. Uh, I'm not an expert, uh, but as I understand it, it's essentially a complex equation that gets applied to the sound wave to change its various acoustic properties. Uh, if you record from a pickup and a microphone at the same time, by a series of mathematical operations, you can work out a way of transforming the sound of one as close as possible to the other. Uh, as a caveat to that, uh, it can only work if such an operation could possibly exist. Uh, and that is the case with piezo pickups. Uh, they're affected by everything that generates the sound of the instrument. The same vibrations that generate the signal for that pickup generate the sound waves that excite a microphone. Uh, and I don't think that's the case for magnetic pickups. Uh, signal in a magnetic pickup is induced by string movement and string movement alone. And there's a lot more that contributes to the sound uh, of your instrument than just that. So that direct mapping of like pickup sound to microphone sound doesn't necessarily exist in the same way with that kind of pickup. And so that's why impulse response and by extension the, the Tone Dexter don't work as well with magnetic pickups. So is Tone Dexter the only product aimed at the acoustic musician market? And I think the short answer is no. <laughs> there are lots of impulse response boxes available, a lot of pedals that ship with built-in models aimed at acoustic musicians. And the most obvious alternative to me at least is the Nux Optima Air. That's available for around £140, and it does mostly the same thing as the Tone Dexter, including preamplification, uh, support for recording your own IR models, etc. Uh, £140 is a lot more palatable than £600, but I still had questions. So I've been getting a lot of recommendations for the Nux. Uh, I've witnessed one doing a pretty phenomenal job for a guitar player I was gigging with, actually. Uh, and if I was a guitar player, I'd probably just would have gone ahead and bought one and like that would be a, the end of it but I'm not a guitar player uh, I wanted to do my research and make sure that it could work for the banjo and my setup in general uh, and this led me to like forum posts discussing its use and how the recording function of it of the Nux uh, something that the Tone Dexter is apparently very good at uh, apparently the Nux not so great at it which you know well, there's that there's that money differential coming into play and that led me to a site where someone had written open source software for producing IR models using a PC. And that was apparently doing a superior job to what the Nux could do on its own. Using that software, that would let me see uh, what an IR model could do for me in particular without having to commit any money to it. So that website, linked in the description, uh, is home to the Kuki IR generator. Uh, and if you have an audio interface with at least two inputs and a reasonable microphone, uh, you can record the impulse response of your particular instrument. And the instructions are on that site, but I'll run through it very quickly. So I've picked the octave method as I don't want to rely on the site always being available, and I want a fast turnaround time. So, you know, in five, ten years or whatever, when this site doesn't exist anymore, I'll still have this script, hopefully. Um, I've downloaded and I've extracted the script here. And what you'll find in Windows, this won't load. I don't know if that's different on Mac or Linux, um, but there's some invalid characters. So I'm going to open it up. Uh, I'm just going to uh, show you those characters. I'm going to remove them. 
So here's the uh, the file. And you see these things with question marks? That's what it's complaining about. So I'm going to replace those with, I think they're accented Ds. Oh, oops. Oh, there you go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so I've done that. I'll save it, close it, and now it should open correctly in Octave. There we go. So if I hit play, that's this one over here, we have the Kuki IR generator interface. So you'll need to pick um, you know, the configuration that will map your set that match your setup. And what we can do now, if I pick up my banjo. So I've set up uh, my microphones and my pickup going into my audio interface. I've got them positioned correctly. I'm going to use this record 10 second function to see if the levels are about right. Okay, so it thinks the signal's too weak, but what I've actually found with banjo is that like it's it's going to be like it's always going to think it's too weak because the uh, the peaks are so much higher than the lows. I can probably get a bit more. So I think uh, one of the colors represents the pickup, the other one, the uh, microphone. I can't remember which is which, but what you want to do is adjust the levels on your interface so that basically you get it to as loud as possible without clipping. So that's too loud, so I'm going to dial it back a little bit and then it will probably be good to go. Right, that'll do. So once you're satisfied, uh, change this to two minutes. You'll definitely want it to be as long as possible and hit record. And you'll want to play a bunch of stuff up and down the neck, individual strings, chords, brushes, near and far away from the bridge, lead and back up, just anything you're likely to play. And you want that recording to have as much information about your instrument and the microphone's response to it as possible. So, once you're done with your two minutes of recording, you can hit the Compute IR button. And that'll take a short while. And after that, you can listen to the result. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> like, just astonishing. So save the uh, save the IR file, uh, and I recommend naming it something that includes the names of the instrument and the microphone and anything else relevant, such as microphone position and the settings. So that IR file that we've just generated, that will be able to make the instrument sound uh, as if a microphone was put in front of it in the exact same position, in the exact same environment. But it won't necessarily do a good job with a different instrument, and it won't be able to sound like a different microphone. You might want to repeat the process with different instruments and different microphones to give yourself a variety of options. So that's all well and good, but how do you then use the IR file? Uh, if you're a home recording, uh, you know, there's a bunch of reasons you might not want to use a microphone. So let's have a look at that first. So we're in Reaper, and I've made these two recordings. Here's the uh, the pickup, and here's the microphone. You can just, uh, you can hear what these sound like just real quick. Okay, so we want to add an effects. Uh, plug into the pickup sound. So if we go into the effects and we're searching for the reverb, that's R E A V E R B, 
plugin that comes with Reaper. And we go to this little box here that says Impulse Response Generation. We click Add, we click File, and then we find our uh, IR that we recorded earlier. There it is. We want the standard one, not the ITP one. Now the wet sound is the sound of the IR, uh, IR model and the dry sound is the sound of the pickup. So we want to mute the pickup sound. And that's all it is. So now if we play that, that should, that should show us what our IR model sounds like. That's pretty cool. It's quite fun actually. If you do record, if you record them twice like this, you can kind of flip between the two, and sometimes it can be kind of difficult to hear which one is which if it, if you've got a particularly good model. Uh, so let's, let's give that a go. So here's the microphone sound. So yeah, pretty good. Okay, so what about when we want to use the uh, IR model live? And that's surely the whole point of this, right? Um, and I promised at the start that you could do this for considerably less than 50 pounds. So here's my recommendation. Uh, there are a bunch of IR loader pedals for less than 100 pounds, but in particular, there's the MVave IR box. Uh, if you want a good returns policy and all of that stuff, you can get it on Amazon for about, for about 40 pounds. And if you're willing to take more of a risk, it's available on AliExpress, uh, delivered for about twenty pounds. That's twenty pounds. Uh, that's quite a saving, even on the Nux. Never mind the Tone Dexter. The MVave IR box does what it says on the tin. It has a single input into which you'll need to feed the preamplified signal of your pickup, and it has three outputs: an auxiliary output for going to a DI or to other pedals, uh, a balanced XLR output to go straight to a sound desk. Uh, and it also does USB output if you want to record on a PC via a USB cable, so that's pretty neat. So if you combine that with a preamp, uh, you can have an extremely compact pedal board. So to use your IR model, uh, you'll need to install the Cube Suite software, which I've linked in the description. With that software, you can load your IR files. Uh, the documentation says it supports 24-bit 2048 sample IRs, uh, but it doesn't seem to like the 24-bit IRs that I've uh, generated, so I've stuck to 16-bit, which seems to work fine. Uh, I found this software to be pretty unintuitive and buggy, uh, so you may need some patience. So first thing you need to do is pick a slot for your IR to live in. And you don't need to worry about overwriting things. If you ever do, uh, if you hit this button, restore factory settings, that will restore all the original IRs if you want them for some reason. Uh, you know, if you're an electric guitar player or whatever, I guess. <laughs> Uh, so here we go, let's pick slot number one. Uh, then we pick Edit IR, and we pick Open IR Files. And we find that IR file that we generated earlier, here it is. And you'll probably want to adjust the level. I found that a level of about 20 seems to match my pickup. And then when I hit Return there, or if I hit Save To, it'll ask me to name it. So I'll give it a name. That's, uh, and hit confirm. Now, unintuitively, the IR is not saved at this point. You have to click on it here, and that will load it, and now it's saved. So now you're good to go. You can, uh, you should be able to try this, and it, it should just work. So let's give it a go. So the audio output from the IR box should be almost identical to using the IR file in Reaper. And if it isn't, maybe the software is bugged out and you may want to fit around a bit. And that software is available for iOS, Android and Mac as well, so it might be worth trying some of the others. Uh, let's give it a listen.
So this should work for pretty much any acoustic instrument with a piezo pickup. Guitars, mandolins, fiddles, double bass, ukulele, whatever. Uh, I think it's particularly interesting for banjo, uh, as no banjo pickup I've ever heard uh, really sounds like a banjo out of the box. Um, piezo pickups uh, are relatively cheap and easy to use. There are so many situations where this can be a huge boon. Uh, it doesn't replace the acoustic sound, uh, and in the ideal environment, there's no need. But as a means of getting a more authentic sound to a greater amount of people with less effort, and for an investment of about 20 quid, uh, it feels like a real no-brainer to me. So I hope this video has helped, and thanks for watching.